Hello, my name is Doug Hovell and welcome to Astrophotography Tutorials. Today I'm going to show you a time lapse of the Milky Way. I'm going to show you all the steps that I take to set up and what equipment I'm using. This is going to be with a DSLR and then I will show you the results. I'm going to use this these uh, ribbonwood trees behind me uh, as a foreground for the um, the night sky. Let's get right into the DSLR settings. This is what most people are searching for fast. These settings will get you started quickly but as I will point out later there are some things I would try a little bit different. The best thing to do is try these settings and then adjust if needed. ISO 800, AWB, 30 second exposure, done. Get the ISO settings, you, you may or may not know how to do that, but I'll show you on my camera. Most cameras are similar, it might be a little bit different, but first thing you have to do is, is take this dial wheel and make sure it's in the M for manual. And the way you set the ISO is there, a, there is a button right here on my camera that says ISO. You, you press that and it'll bring up the ISO screen. And then also this little dial wheel right here is what I use uh, for the exposure setting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press my ISO button, bring up the ISO screen, and then I can then move around with the arrow keys to different ISO exposures. You can play around to see which ones use best. Of course, as you know, uh, the higher the ISO, the more noise that comes in. To adjust the exposures, you use that dial wheel and slide it over to 30 seconds. For Milky Way, all we need is 30 seconds. Next thing I want to show you is the white balance. Right here you see WB. You're just going to press that button up. White balance, AWB, is for auto white balance. Now on this particular Milky Way shot, I took AWB and after I did that, I found that that probably wasn't the best but auto white balance works really well for single shots. I'll show you the results coming up. Another important part of setting up your DSLR is to set up the image output. Now in this case you can see in the lower left corner I've got RAW plus large JPG. You can change that by hitting the, the menu button and then go to the quality and then there you can change all these different types of uh, file output. For uh, my purposes I use just uh, the RAW but I also like to get the JPG just to kind of give me an idea what's there. One other little trick here is that when you're doing your imaging in between each photo this little display window will pop open and it's to me I think it's a, 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 a way of wasting battery so if you press that display button right here the display will go off and then you won't have this big bright white light. For time lapse we need to repeat this over and over taking exposures. A good way to repeat exposures is using an intervalometer. The intervalometer simply just plugs right into the side of the camera on a port right here. What we have to do is set it to the desired settings. One little quick note in order to save the battery when I use it in storage I usually slide off this back cover and then I use a piece of tape underneath one of the batteries and that just saves the battery life if you want to do that. Light button right here, click that. And then we have a start stop button and these are your setting buttons right here with this wheel. Now the first thing you'll see right here at the top is you have a delay. The delay is for how long to wait before you start taking your first exposure. Uh, for me, all I need to do is just set it, stand away from the camera. I don't need long, maybe about six seconds. That's just the first delay. Anywhere from 99 hours, 99 minutes, and I guess 99 seconds. But once you set it, you press OK. Now if we want to go to the long, let's go over to here. And the long, you really don't want to, to use this setting. It's best to leave it at zero. Uh, let the camera setting take care of that because we're going to use just 30 second exposures and if you do set this here then the intervalometer and, and the DSLR will, will kind of fight each other but if you do want to change this you could go in here and, 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 and set the, the long, long exposure if you wanted to do that I just leave it at zero zero 
And then the next we need to do is the interval. Now the interval, by the time my camera gets done downloading the images and everything else on it, one second is long enough uh, because I literally the, the images take about 20-25 seconds to download so I'm getting about probably about uh, 30 or seconds or more between each image so one second here is plenty. Now the next setting is the end for the number of uh, uh, images to take. Now it, it, this little dash dash means infinity but if we wanted to set that we could go in here and use the up down arrow keys and uh, change that value. Uh, for me, I, I don't want to stop during the night, so I always set it to infinity with the dash dash. Set that, say OK. And then one other setting right, right here is uh, the sound. It will make a little beep after each one. And I, you typically don't like the sound, so you can uh, turn that off or on, depending. Just hit the set button. Now, to start everything off, all we do is we just turn the camera. It's on manual, and it's on, so we'll just go ahead and, and press it. It's going to count down. Five, four, three, two, one. You can see the little green light come on. It clicked, and now it's in the, in the middle of taking that 30 second exposure right there the it's downloading the image right there you can see the little light on the DSLR it's red and like I say it takes literally about 30 seconds for that to uh, get done downloading with the raw and the JPG image it's done waited one second and it started up again another piece of hardware that you would want to consider is uh, additional batteries now this little battery grip that I have here uh, cost about 22 bucks on Amazon and what you can do with this is it'll allow you to put in two batteries into the camera at once and the last thing you want to happen when you're doing your time lapse is for a single battery to die during the night and then you would interrupt that sequence of the time lapse this particular piece uh, just plugs right in your DSLR and when you pull it off it just kinda like snaps off like that and then you just pull the single battery out of your camera and then this simply just slides right into the bottom there and then there's like a little uh, set screw that you wind to tighten it down now one of the important things is don't lose this little door uh, your camera will not run with a single battery without this little door so keep a good eye on that take an image of the night sky with any DSLR lens you have. Now this particular lens that I'm using is a Rokinon 2.8 lens and this particular lens will give you a very wide view of the night sky. The focus on the uh, D DSLR lens is it's pretty much all the same. You go all the way to infinity and just back it back a tad and that will be focused for most of them. If you want to go further into it you could go into the focus window of the uh, DSLR camera but that usually works for me really well and then on the Rokinon 2.8 you can see right here on the dial it's got uh, 2.8 and that's the best for Milky Way have that lens wide open now in this particular time-lapse set that I did I unfortunately didn't notice it but I was shooting at f8 came out a little bit darker than I really wanted but I was able to do some post-processing to bring it out the way I wanted it afterwards. Here's a look at the entire setup here. Not much to it. Just a DSLR sitting on a standard tripod. And we've got a bag of water to help weight it down a little bit. Here's the intervalometer just running away automatically. And we've got the extra battery pack on the back here you a shot of that so you can see it and we've got the display off I want to turn the display on just press the display button one more time and then we'll show that so let's go take a look at the results now before I show you the time-lapse video that I had with of the Milky Way I wanted to show you a little bit of what I was working with right here you see a single image uh, before any processing as you can see it's darker than I really expected I thought my lens was set to f 2.8 but I accidentally had it set to f8 if I had my choice to do it over again I 
definitely would have uh, selected f2.8. It was just a mistake I made. Uh, but when I did some post-processing, as you can see, uh, I was able to pull out some of the, the details out in post-processing. And another thing that I probably would have done a little bit different uh, now that I've done this uh, once here is I probably would take the auto white balance and set that to one value because what, what, what happens with auto white balance is that it will take the background and give it kind of a flickering because at one point it might detect the white balance is a little bit brighter than another and so to get rid of that I would just set the white balance to a, a set value. Anyway, without any further ado, here is the Milky Way time-lapse video I did. Don't blink, you might miss it. The entire video is 12 seconds for the entire night. That's over 450 images compiled together in one 12-second video. Also, you'll notice Jupiter and Mars are across, sweeps across the lower third of the screen. I was thinking would be another good video was to show how I did the processing steps and if you think that might be something you're interested in please leave your comments below. There are literally thousands of different ways to make a time-lapse video of the Milky Way. If you have any suggestions or comments please leave them below. If this is your first time watching I'd like you to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.